Thank you, Sister Logan. <clears throat> this is the seventh sermon in uh, this series on the fall of Babylon. <clears throat> and the title of this sermon is, as the text says, Come out of her, my people. <clears throat> so we have this morning before us a word from the Lord. <clears throat> and this is a word to all the people of God. <clears throat> My people, this is not the word of a man, <clears throat> but the voice that said it sounded from heaven itself. Now precisely who uttered this voice, we don't know. We're not told. It says John heard another voice from heaven. <clears throat> but we do know that it came from heaven, so it's the same as coming from the very mouth of God himself. Was it an angel that said this, or one of the elders, or one of the creatures before the throne? What was his appearance and how much glory did he have? What was his name and his particular ministry to God? We don't know any of these things. <clears throat> and we're not concerned with any of these things because the one who said it is not as important as what was said and the place from whence it was stated. These words are as a trumpet of warning to the people of God. John is about to be shown here in Revelation chapter 18 a vision of the long-anticipated judgment of that arch-rival of the church of God, <clears throat> Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. But before her plagues are poured out upon her, this cry rings out from heaven to earth, Come out of her, my people. Yeah. Yeah. You may ask, what are the people of God doing in Babylon? <clears throat> Babylon is a judgment of God upon an unfaithful church. Now many people are absorbed into Babylon because they're not fit for the kingdom of God. Some in the churches are taken to Babylon unwittingly and against their wishes. Some were taken not knowing where they were going. Some were born in Babylon and have not seen any other city, although they've heard about another. So Babylon is a test for every believer. The unbelieving and hypocrites are snared by her and the people of God learn to hate her. How can we know which is which? By those who come out of her. Yeah. Now normally a captive will flee his captor at the very first opportunity, but here a call has to be made to the captives to come out of her, to flee Babylon. And we should also note here that this call comes after the announcement in Revelation 18, verse 2, after the announcement that Babylon is fallen. So these are, these are warnings before the judgment comes. These are warnings given to the people of God, such as Jesus warned his disciples of the destruction of Jerusalem. And he told them when they were outside the temple, looking at all the buildings of the temple, he said, See not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another. It shall not be thrown down. Now the Lord's telling us the same thing about Babylon before it happens. Although the judgment of Babylon has not yet taken place, the angel from heaven says, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Just in case there is someone who is not sure about where they are living, perhaps not sure about whether or not Babylon can be recovered, not sure about what her end will be, not sure about what to do under the present circumstances, the Lord makes it all clear with great certainty here. Babylon is fallen and come out of her, my people. Amen. You know that Babylon has great power in the earth because her captives have to be delivered and told to come out of her. Right. Now there was a time in the past... <clears throat> When God told his people to build houses in Babylon and plant and marry and have children because the judgment required that they stay in Babylon for a while. But that's not what he says here. Now is the time to come out of her. Considering the judgment that is about to follow, the Lord is very merciful in giving us this warning. We saw this again in the in the study of the Olivet Discourse, where Jesus warned his disciples to flee Jerusalem at the certain time, because there are some judgments of God that come to certain locations, geographical locations, 
specific places. And the only way to avoid that judgment is for you to leave that place. <clears throat> God did not preserve a few houses in Jerusalem when the Romans came in and destroyed it. If you wanted to survive, you had to leave Jerusalem. You weren't even safe in the temple. As a matter of fact, you especially were not safe in the temple. <clears throat> so the only way to survive is to flee Babylon. <clears throat> and this requires diligence on our part. Ancient Israel was taken captive by force, but they were not freed by force. The judgment was by force, but the deliverance was with a word. And you had to take heed to the word and give diligence to an effort to leave. So I would not count on coming out of Babylon like Lot was brought out of Sodom. <clears throat> I wouldn't count on the Lord sending an angel to grab you by the arm and forcibly remove you from the place from which he told you to leave. <clears throat> then what does it mean to come out of Babylon? Now it may involve leaving certain churches, but Babylon is not a geographical location. Spiritual Babylon. <clears throat> She is a great spiritual city. Therefore, it is possible for a person to leave a Babylonian church, but to continue in captivity to the same Babylonian spirit. Yeah. My point here is that to come out of Babylon does not necessarily mean to just leave a certain church, but to flee all of her influences, all of which are adulterous. Wherever there is a compromise or an agreement struck with the world, or the flesh in the name of God, that is Babylon. Amen. We are not to get within range of her enticing looks and her enticing voice. Do not buy her merchandise. <clears throat> Do not allow her to teach you anything. Do not drink from her cup of fornication, wherever it may be found. We know, John says, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is, and every man that hath this hope purifieth himself, even as he is pure. So this, this is how the people of God are. They make all effort and by all means to keep themselves pure so that this hope is maintained that we are, we are going to be like him. Amen. The bride of Christ <clears throat> cannot make herself ready while living in Babylon. Babylonian ways must be forsaken. Babylonian thinking must be abandoned and minds given to the word of God. <clears throat> Nearly all of us here can confess that we have been influenced in some way by Babylon and that we had to unlearn and relearn some things. And this required effort on our part, but God is our helper in these things. <clears throat> part of the new covenant is that they all shall be taught of God so when an honest inquiry is made into the things of God, the Holy Spirit is forward to help us learn of Him. Now my aim here is not to create a list of things or a set of instructions that constitute coming out of Babylon, but merely to show that leaving a certain church is not the end of the matter. Coming out of Babylon has to do with being delivered from her power and influence. Now, however complicated this might be, and it can become very complicated from our point of view, but no matter how complicated it is, it must be done. The people of God must come out of Babylon. <clears throat> the call to come out of her, my people, comes from heaven, but this call is not to everyone. Some will not hear this call, even though it's right here in the Bible. The Lord can speak to demons and tell them to be quiet and he can tell them to come out and he can order them to go into a herd of swine or whatever the Lord wishes. <clears throat> but the Lord can also speak so that no one can hear except his sheep. And this is this kind of word. Either you hear this or you don't. This is not a general call for the masses to make, make a mass exodus out of Babylon. That's not what this is. This is to my people. <clears throat> the ones who had no real part with the great whore in the first place. <clears throat> the ones who have not defiled themselves with her. There may be several different ways that people got into Babylon, but there is only one way get of getting out, and that is to heed the call to come out. 
we should be emphatic about this. There is no other way of escaping spiritual Babylon presented in Scripture that I know of. Mm -hmm. The only way out is to take heed to the Word of God and to come out. That's because Babylon is a judgment from God, and no one escapes his judgment except the ones he delivers. The Lord's people, no matter how hard we tried to help others in Babylon, no matter how hard we tried to be kind to others and get along with others there, the Lord's people have always felt ill at ease in Babylon. We never did fit in there. We never really did like it there. We acknowledged early on that Babylon could not be our home, and our people were not her kind of people. One of the things that we recognized early on was the absence of our Lord there. Now, he was spoken about, and his name was used frequently, but very few there loved him or loved his word. Although they professed to serve him, very few in Babylon were found to be like him. Babylon had nothing of real heavenly substance to offer us, and she seemed to always refuse the good things that we wanted to share with her. These were not just funny feelings that we got while we were there, but it was because of our love of the truth that made us oddities in Babylon. We observed that the word of God was not believed in Babylon, therefore the people of God cannot be at home there. We observed the willing participation with the world there, and a preference for the world, and a rejection of the things of Zion. In Babylon, we sensed that there was a fornication with the world going on. We saw few men in Babylon reaping great personal profits at the expense of the souls of the people. We saw her heaping up her merchandise and glorifying herself in the name of Christ. The people of God cannot partake of the cup of Babylon, so when the call to come out was sounded, we heard it and we came out. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, <clears throat> without any qualifiers. It was a voice from heaven that said, Come out of her, my people. When God's people hear that voice, the response is, That is exactly what I've been wanting to do. We might have been born there, but we never liked it there. Only the Lord's people will come out of Babylon, and all of the Lord's people will come out of Babylon. A mixed multitude came out of Egypt, but a mixed multitude is not going to come out of Babylon. <clears throat> the great shepherd of the sheep says, Come out of her, my people, and the sheep will come out. It's my belief that the Lord is presently making this call at this time. How long this call will sound out, I do not know. However, it may not be much longer before it is too late to take heed to it. When the call to come out of her has been made in Babylon's judgment cannot be very far off. Why do I believe this? Because we have come out. Not by coincidence, but by deliverance. <clears throat> And because no one comes out unless the Lord calls them out. And because the Lord doesn't call his people out of Babylon until she is about to fall. Now there are reasons in our text to come out of her. <clears throat> because God's merciful and because we are his children and heirs, he gives us some reasons why to come out of Babylon. That ye be not partakers of her sins. One of Babylon's greatest enticements geared toward the people of God <clears throat> is the lure of the possibility of helping others in Babylon. I'm going to deal with this more extensively in the next installment <clears throat> here in a few weeks. But notice that there are no qualifiers in this call to come out of her, such as, come out of her, my people, except those of you who have ministries there. Or come out of her, my people, except those of you who are leaders. Or come out of her, my people, except if you have family there too. There is a part of Babylon that many people have not recognized yet, and that is her great power to seduce. She is the great whore. That is what harlots do. They seduce, and she is empowered by Satan. Furthermore, it's God's purpose 
actually that Babylon have this kind of very strong attraction and that she is a merciless captor. That way, no one who is delivered from her can say, I did it of myself. <clears throat> that way, the whole work is traced back to God, and he gets the glory for fulfilling his own purpose in righteousness and in wisdom. Now, according to what's spoken here from heaven, those who are deceived into thinking that their profession of faith grants them immunity to Babylon will eventually be found to be partaking of her sins. That's, that's what is said. Come out of her, my people, that, so that ye be not partakers of her sins. In other words, when the Lord tells us to come out, if you don't come out, you'll become like the rest of the people in Babylon. Now, in a way, this really is a simple matter. <clears throat> it shows what people have a preference for. If you prefer the word of the Lord, you'll hear his word and you'll come out. And if you don't have a preference for the word of the Lord, he can speak it, you can hear it, you can understand it, and you'll stay in Babylon anyway. It just reveals it's a matter of preference. What, what does a person love? <clears throat> Again, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now the indication in this word is that if they do not come out, the Lord will abandon them to Babylon. I can testify, I know Many of you can also, that when we were captive in Babylon, we were tempted many ways and many times to become involved in her sins and partake in them, and we were able to overcome Babylon and come out of her. I know that the only way that this is possible is because the Lord kept us and spared us and was merciful to us. It was not because of my personality. It was not because I had some great amount of wisdom. It was not due to my personal strength to resist temptation. It was because Jesus protected me and kept me. He made me strong. He gave me wisdom. He delivered me. Now what seems to be stated in this text, my understanding is, is that if his people refuse to come out of Babylon, he will withdraw all those resources and leave them to themselves where they're at which means they will be a prey for Babylon and will inevitably be partakers of her sins. Didn't God make his own people a prey to their enemies? Isaiah 42, 22, But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith, Restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord? He against whom we have sinned? They would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. The Lord does this kind of thing. If the Lord gives them up to Babylon. They will be partakers of her sins. And it naturally follows, then, they will receive of her plagues. <clears throat> this is one of the reasons why the call to Babylon, to come out of Babylon, has been made, so that ye receive not of her plagues. Abraham reasoned with God concerning Lot being in Sodom. Will God destroy the righteous with the wicked? That be it far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Mm -hmm. Now Lot was a righteous man living in Sodom, and God did destroy Sodom, <clears throat> and he did not destroy the righteous with the wicked. He delivered Lot because he was a just man and a righteous man. Mm -hmm. But again... I wouldn't count on the, on the Lord sending an angel to grab you by the arm and pull you out of Babylon like he did for Lot. Mm -hmm. I would consider our text today to be the voice of the angel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here it is in Revelation 18. The call of God is being made loud and clear to come out of her, mm -hmm. lest ye be partakers of her sins, and lest ye be partakers of her plagues. Will you be like the horse and the mule who have no understanding? whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, those who do not flee Babylon will be without excuse. 
God will see to it that he is righteous when they receive of her plagues. My understanding again of the matter is that they will receive of her plagues because they were partakers of her sins. And they were partakers of her sins because they did not heed the call to come out of her. Amen. Amen. This is a very serious matter. Amen. <clears throat> yes, it is. Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. <clears throat> we know this is common knowledge that leaven spreads through a whole lump of dough. And one of the most prominent things noted about Babylon is her power to influence all nations and kings. Her merchants are the great men of the earth. In fact, she has influenced and defiled the whole earth. So when the Lord says to come out of her, it's very foolish to propose that anyone can stay with her and remain undefiled. I think it's fair to say that come out of her, my people, is a commandment. Yeah. Solomon said, Solomon spoke about heeding the commandment to avoid <clears throat> this kind of sin. In Proverbs 6, beginning at 23, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, Neither let her take thee with her eyelids, for by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread. In other words, he, after dabbling in this sin with this woman, he's got nothing left but the crust of bread in his hand. He might have started out a wealthy man, but when it's all over, he's been robbed and spoiled of everything. Listen to what he says next. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. See the... Babylon, being the great horse, she's on the hunt. You're not in a neutral situation when you're in Babylon. Your, your precious life is being hunted by her. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Why come out that ye be not partakers of her sins, so you don't become like her and so that you don't suffer her judgment? Babylon is the great whore, and she has the ability to wear you down. That is what harlots do. They entice and allure. They make powerful appeals to the base, depraved nature. It's unwise to presume that God will continue to preserve you in Babylon after he is said to come out of her. And this lesson is taught over and over again in Scripture. The place that bears the name of the Lord and that becomes defiled, is destined to be destroyed. <clears throat> that includes the entire earth and Noah's day, and Jerusalem, and the temple, and the land of Israel. The people removed off the land because they defiled it. Mm -hmm. Now these are geographical locations that had to be forsaken in order to avoid the judgment of God. If you weren't in the ark, then you died in the flood. Mm -hmm. If you lived in the ancient land of promise when the judgment came, you were carried captive to another land, and the promised land was left desolate. If you stayed in ancient Jerusalem when the Babylonians came or when the Romans came, you were either slaughtered or carried away captive. <clears throat> our lives are not in our own hands. Faith was given to us. Belief was given to us. Grace is required to save us. We are totally dependent upon Jesus Christ for every good thing. We have no good thing of ourselves. If he were to withdraw his heavenly resources, we would surely fall immediately. Yeah. As for those who say they want to help Babylon or that the Lord has given them a ministry in Babylon, we read of no such options in the scripture. Right. The voice from heaven says to all the people of God, come out of her. My people, <clears throat> the, this, there is only one alternative to coming out of her, and that is to remain and partake of her sins and of her plagues. <clears throat> she is that great and wealthy city empowered by the devil that has covered the whole earth with her influence and merchandise. <clears throat> when God has said, come out of her, my people, how long do you think a professed believer who refuses to leave is going to last in Babylon. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God. When scripture says 
that ye be not partakers of her plagues. <clears throat> this judgment is going to make the plagues of Egypt look like child's play. You know, Egypt recovered from the ten plagues that came upon them. They, they actually recovered from it, and they exist to this day. But if you read Revelation chapter 18, Babylon does not recover from this judgment. Amen. She will never rise again, never to be heard from or seen again. <clears throat> so these plagues are not like a disease that's going to spread around. <clears throat> she will be paid back double. Here are some of the, the plagues that are going to come upon her according to Scripture. She will be paid back double according to her works. Much sorrow and torment. All of her plagues will come in one day. Death, mourning, famine, she will be utterly burned with fire. The fruits that she lusted after, the dainty good things, will not be found in her anymore. All her riches will be lost, linen, purple, scarlet, gold, precious stones, and pearls. She will be thrown down with violence, never to be found again. Now Babylon is a spiritual entity. She is a great spiritual city. So these are going to be primarily spiritual plagues. <clears throat> this is not the kind of judgment where a few, and I say this tongue in cheek, there's not a few lucky ones that are going to survive this. <clears throat> Babylon is fallen, is fallen. <clears throat> Her sins have reached unto heaven. <clears throat> now this is actually what prompted this voice from heaven. See, this came at a certain time. Yeah. That certain time was when her sins reached unto heaven. <clears throat> we don't know pre precisely when that time is, but we are given the circumstances that prompted the call to come out of her. <clears throat> Again, because the new covenant is a covenant of knowledge and fellowship with God, the Lord reveals to us why he has commanded his people to come out of Babylon. In the plain of Shinar, the people wanted to build a tower that reached unto heaven, but the result of spiritual Babylon is that her sins have reached unto heaven. At Shinar, the Lord came down to see, <clears throat> but spiritual Babylon sins have come up to him. We know what God is going to do when something like this reaches unto heaven. Now, Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar, he spoke about this principle <clears throat> in Daniel 4.22, it is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven, now what's Nebuchadnezzar grew strong and great, and it was of the Lord. The Lord put him in this position. But now what's heaven's response to this greatness? Hew down the tree and destroy it. Yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast of the field, till seven times pass over him. Now, this was a mercy shown to Nebuchadnezzar and, and Babylon at this time, but no such mercy is going to be shown to spiritual Babylon. It will be hewn down forever and destroyed. <clears throat> When God judges spiritual Babylon, there aren't going to be any stump or roots left. When her sins have reached unto heaven, this is another way of saying that her cup of iniquity is full. When her sins reach unto heaven, or when the cup is full, that means that God is going to take action. And we don't want to miss that this is the reason for the voice out of heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. When God is about to send his judgment on a certain place, he mercifully warns his people first, if there are, there are any of his people there. God hath remembered her iniquities. <clears throat> this, again, is the way the Holy Spirit speaks when God is about to give his judgment. Her sins reach unto heaven, her cup is full, and God remembers her iniquities. It's not that God was ever blind to her iniquities or that he had forgotten some of her iniquities. But this means that now there's going to be an accounting of each and every one. They're going to be, so to speak, they're going to be tallied up and every one of them is going to be remembered and accounted for and she'll be judged for them. <clears throat> they're going to be added up and put in the balance 
and double will be rendered unto her for her sins. In the new covenant, the Lord says, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. But he has no such covenant with Babylon. <clears throat> All her iniquities will be remembered. And that covers a great amount of time. <clears throat> Just before she is judged of God. <clears throat> now in closing here, there is, there is a good reason to come out too. <clears throat> There's a good reason to heed this word to come out of Babylon. It's not all just about fear. <clears throat> Another reason to come out is because of the place we are to flee to. The temple of God is being built in Zion. Come and contribute to what God is doing. If you love the name of the Lord, that's a very good reason to flee Babylon. Amen. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away. Stand not still. Remember the Lord afar off and let Jerusalem come into your mind. That's Jeremiah 51, 50. And Isaiah 48, 20. Go ye forth of Babylon. Flee ye from the Chaldeans with a voice of singing. Declare ye, tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. Say ye, the Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. Amen. And they thirsted not when he led them through the deserts. He caused the water to flow out of the rock for them. He claved the rock also, and waters gushed out. Now, Isaiah spoke that long before the Babylonian captivity ever happened. <clears throat> Another one, Jeremiah 50, verse 8. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he goats before the flock. I think it was Brother Tony mentioned this a few months back that <clears throat> a good farmer will mix in some goats with the sheep because the, the, the male goats have this tendency. They want to run to the front of the flock and they want to be the leaders. Well, now here... The Lord's telling us, be like the male, be like the he goats in this manner of coming out of Babylon. Take the lead and, and head toward Zion. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 50, 28, the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. After ancient Babylon fell, Cyrus gave a decree to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. Anyone who wants to. The responses of the Jews revealed their preferences. <clears throat> yeah. The temple of God or Babylon. <clears throat> we know what Ezra valued. We know what Zechariah and Joshua and Zerubbabel and Nehemiah, we know where their hearts were at and what they valued most. <clears throat> we know what place they favored. For these believers and others whose names are in the scripture, there was only one place they wanted to be. Their greatest care was for what God had established for the name of our God. Being freed from Babylon meant going to Zion. To me, this can be the only place to go after being delivered from Babylon. Amen. I want to read Cyrus' decree. Ezra chapter 1, thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord of God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all this people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts, beside the freewill offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin, these are the he goats, and the priests and the Levites with all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem. Now, when the options are to come out of Babylon and return to Zion with the king's blessing mm -hmm. and provision to build the habitation of God, that's one option, mm -hmm. or to stay in ba Babylon when God has said to come out of her, and he has declared that her sins have reached unto heaven, and that he is going to judge her with plagues. Now, really, this isn't a matter of choice, actually. 
It's a matter of hearing this voice from heaven. Once the voice has been heard, the right thing to do is very obvious. <clears throat> will you hear the voice from heaven and come out of Babylon? Or will you ignore the merciful warning call of God? Will you give to her what Jesus gave to you to share with his people? Is it right to give the children's meat to the dogs? How long will you tempt God with your delaying and doubting? How long will you endure Babylon's ears that do not hear and her eyes that do not see? How long will you cast your pearls before the swine? How long can you resist the enticements of the great harlot? The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.